Hello and welcome. You are now looking at the website Evernote.com, which is home for the productivity app Evernote. Evernote is an adaptable system that you can use to keep organized as well as collaborative with your communication. So one of the key so one of the key features in Evernote is going to be note taking. Whether you do that note taking digitally or you do it in an analog format, Evernote is there to house what it is that you have written. It takes those notes and anything else that you'd like to keep and archives them. So you have a place not only where you can store, but also where you can categorize. And one of the key features in Evernote is that it is made for categorization. That means then that your content will be searchable according to the system that you set up when you put your documents in order. Evernote can be used on multiple devices. So it's actually an application that will work on your personal computer or your Mac. It will also work on your mobile device and it will also work as a cloud application from your browser. Evernote provides its users and limited storage capacity. The limitations are done by uploading. So depending on how much you pay, that's how much you can upload on a regular basis. Now Evernote is really designed for you to get more done in less time. It's designed to increase the level of your communication, whether or not you're going to be working with someone on specific information or you want to collaborate with a customer or someone in your organization or concerning your organization or even people who are working on your team. One of the key features of Evernote in that way is that Evernote can be used to automate communication. It can also be used to automate notifications. Basically, Evernote can be used to work smarter, especially by using its automation features. And so as a result of that in this course, we're going to be focusing on how you can automate communication and notifications so that you'll be able to work smarter. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now, in this video, we're going to talk about the overall direction of the course. Now, Evernote is a well-known and used application for note-taking and organizing the information we come in contact with every day. It is adaptable to the way that we choose to organize the voluminous amount of information that we use. It provides us a searchable database for our information. While the course will reintroduce some of those technical features, its focus is on tracking your activity on different popular sites, applications, and web apps, and then using the power of Evernote's adaptable and searchable system for archiving this information. Therefore, some of the time will be attended to doing the basics of documenting the process, but most of the time will be spent on automation. Now, the focus of the course is to help you to use Evernote to work smarter. And that means that we'll feature website applications such as Google Drive, Zapier, and Ifty, or If This Then That. Then you'll be shown the practical setup of each of these applications and how they interact with Evernote. You'll then see how you can adapt, choose, and set up your own individual system for automating and archiving your information. So with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now in this video, we're going to discuss pricing options. And so first, what we're going to do is we're going to discuss what's available in the free version of Evernote. Now all free versions include unlimited total storage. So there's no limit on how much you can actually upload into Evernote. You can also share notebooks with other individuals. So everything that you have in terms of your content, you can actually give other people access to those pages, those notes, those notebooks, whether it's for using or working. You can also search your printed and handwritten text in your images. And all of your data is going to be encrypted, so it will not be insecure inside of Evernote. You can actually have a passcode lock on your mobile app. So that means then that you have even another level of security to your data. Make notes on your images. And if you are a user of Salesforce.com, you can actually integrate your personal notes inside of the files that you use inside of Salesforce. 
but you'll also know that there are limits on how much you can upload depending on what level you have. Now the basic in this case is the free version. So you're limited to 60 megabytes of data on a monthly basis if you're going to be uploading into Evernote. And of course those limits go up as you go up in price. The same is true for the maximum note size. So if you're talking about how big of a note can you actually place inside of Evernote at one time, you are going to want to be mindful of the level at which you are paying. Now one of the keys is understanding how you're going to use Evernote. And as you'll notice, when we're talking about both premium and business, there are going to be some things that are going to be missing from the free version. For example, if you need to scan and digitize business cards, you'll not be able to do that in the free version. Or if it will be handy for you to turn your notes into presentations, you will not be able to do that in the free version. So these are things that you definitely want to keep in mind and you probably want to take a look at the premium version, which is the highest version, and then determine which of those features you are not going to be using. And if you are going to be collaborating, you will almost definitely need an Evernote business account. So now that you've seen what's available in the free version, we want to make note of those things that are only available for paid subscribers. If you're going to be syncing your data across all of your devices, then you will need a paid version. If you're going to use the free version, you can only use two devices. Now, just so that you'll know, the web is not considered to be a device. So if you're going to be using your browser for Evernote, you will not be charged as if that were a device. You're going to have two levels of security to your data. You'll also have offline access to your content on desktop and mobile. Now again, if you're only going to be using the free version, you'll only have access to that content through the desktop. And lastly, you are going to have access to support if you have a paid version. If not, if you use the free version, you'll only have access to the Evernote community. Now there are three levels of paid access and it's a good idea for us to discuss that right now also. Now there are three levels of paid access and you're going to notice that they vary in price. Now, you'll notice that they vary in terms of how much you can upload at one time, one gigabyte versus 10 versus 20. And then there are certain features that are available in the premium level and the business level that are not available in the lowest level, which is the plus level. For example, if you want access to your PDFs and your office documents by search, you'll need to get a premium level. Or if you're going to be adding notes to your PDFs when you categorize them. Or if you're going to be using your notes as a presentation, you will need the premium level. And lastly, you'll need the premium level if you're going to be scanning and digitizing business cards. None of those features are going to be available in the lowest level of paid access, which is the plus level. Now, in terms of the business level, you'll notice that there is one significant aspect of this level that if you're going to be collaborating is going to be important. You're going to be able to work with others together in a single workspace. You're also going to have a single sign on and you will be able to administer the entire group or team from your Evernote account. So again, if you're going to be working with other people, you might want to try the business version. And in fact, in this course, we're going to start with the free trial of business and then you can determine which of the features you won't be using and then decide to scale down based on that use. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now in this video, we are going to set up our Evernote on our desktop or laptop. And you're going to notice at the top right hand corner, you see a button there that says try Evernote business. Now, in order to try the maximum amount of features inside of Evernote, you will need to go and do the trial with Evernote business. So let's go ahead and click that button. That's going to bring you to a page that's going to give you a button that says start free trial. Now, when you start a free business account, Evernote assumes that you are going to be collaborating with another individual. 
So if you have another individual that you are going to be working with, perhaps you have an outsourcer or a teammate, you will also want to have their information handy at this point. So once you have all the information in in order to initiate your account, you're then going to click continue. Now when you start the trial, Evernote will actually give you access to free personal Evernote premium for your team. But after the trial, you'll be billed $10 per user per month. The minimum number of users to get started with is going to be two. Now you can do the same thing at $12 a month and you can start by being billed monthly. If you determine that Evernote business is not what you need, you can cancel before the trial is up. So once you have at least two users and you've determined that you're going to be billed either monthly or annually, you can then place your card information inside of Evernote and then you can continue the process. You should then have an email from Evernote stating that your business account is now created. Now, once your account is set up, you can then download the application onto your hard drive and then click the install button. You'll get the opportunity to save the file on your hard drive and then you can start the installation process. Once the application is installed, you can go to the link that says you already have an account. You can then write in your email and then you'll click continue and then you'll write in your password. Your Evernote is then set up on your desktop. Evernote then suggests that you create a note and this is just for the sake of being able to confirm that your accounts will be synced. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a quick note. We're now going to go and click new note. We're going to give this note a title. So now that our note is complete, we'll go back to our dashboard. And what we're going to do is we're going to click the sync button. When we click that sync button, that means that we should find that our document, the one we just created, should also be on the web app when we go and look at it. And so we come back to Evernote.com. We sign in with our email. And when we sign into our web app for the first time, we'll get a welcome message. We're going to just click get started. And what you're going to notice right away is that our note that we created on the desktop is now actually also on our web app. And once we've done that, we're now ready to start using Evernote. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. We are now going to go through the installation process on our mobile device. And in order to do that, we are going to then look for the application inside of whichever platform we are using, whether it is an iPhone or Android or some other platform. We're going to look for the app. And if we search, typically we'll be able to find it on our device or in our app store. So we'll look for it in our app store. And in this particular case, what we will do is we will download the app. Once we have it downloaded, we will then open the app. Then we will use our login username and password. Once we have it entered, we will then click continue. And you should see that the note that we created in the initial setup is now inside of our mobile device. Now to secure our data, what we are going to do is we're going to go to our account. When we do that, we're going to click settings, and then we're going to go to our passcode lock. We're then going to turn on our passcode, and then we're going to enter a passcode that we are going to remember. Evernote will then ask us to re-enter the password, and now our extra layer of security is now in place. If you are a user of Apple technology, you can actually enable your account with Touch ID also. Once you've done that, you can exit by clicking the settings link. And you can exit again by clicking the arrow at the top. Our mobile device is now enabled along with our desktop as well as our web app. If we have to sync our account, we will click the account link. 
We will then scroll to the bottom and then we will click Sync Now. Then our account will be synced. To sign out of the mobile app, all you'll need to do is to click the Sign Out link. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. We are now working inside of our desktop app, and what we want to do with some of the content, whatever we have uploaded, we may want to share it with others. And of course, there are always going to be different levels of sharing. In some cases, you may want to make it public with a certain number of people, but not everyone. And Evernote gives you that option. So we would take this note that we're looking at, the one that says, Welcome, Thomas Duncan. And we can go to the Note section. And we can actually go to this Share menu. And what we're going to do is we're going to click Share Note. That's going to give us a dialog box. And what you'll notice is that we can write in the names and emails of individuals who we want to see that note. Now we can give them certain privileges. As you can see here, we can give certain people the ability to view, but not edit. We can give people the ability to edit, but not view. We can actually give someone the ability to edit and invite others to actually see the note. So depending on how much authority you want to give to the people that you are going to be sharing the note with, you can determine that with this drop down menu. In this particular case, we can write in an email and we can write in a message that we want to use to give context to the note that they're about to see. What we can also do is we can create a link and basically this is a hyperlink and everyone that actually comes in contact with this link will be able to see it. We can also disable this shareable link by clicking this turn off button. Now, the only person that will be able to see the note and work with it will be the person that we have determined by sending them an email. Now, what we're also doing is we're determining how much permission a person has to see other notes in our notebook. So in this particular case, if we wanted to give permission to someone to see everything in our entire notebook, we can modify our notebook permissions here in this link. There are a few more choices that Evernote gives us. For example, if we were to click this link, you'll notice that there's the shareable link again and the internal link. What we can also do is we can send a copy. And that means that someone's going to be able to view a copy, but they won't be able to access the actual document to work with it. We can also share the very same document on social media, whether or not it's Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn. And once we've determined what we want to have in terms of permissions and the people that we want to share it to, we can then click the share button. And we do that, we need to confirm that the people that we are sharing with may or may not be involved in our business or associated with us, but yet we want to share the note with them anyway. Once we do that, we can click confirm and then our note will have been shared. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now in this video, we are going to explore integrations with Evernote. One of the ways that you can extend Evernote's capability is to integrate with other applications. And in order to find out how Evernote works with the applications that you're already using, so if you write the name into the search bar, you'll be able to determine whether or not your application is one that Evernote integrates with directly. So for example, we would type in Microsoft Outlook because that's a common application that people work with. And you would determine that Evernote actually has an integration with Microsoft Outlook. In fact, you can actually access that integration through Microsoft Office. Now this application only works with Evernote for business. So if you have the free version or if you have one of the other paid versions, you will not be able to use Evernote for Outlook. So it's a good idea to take a look at all of the applications that fall under the category of the platform that you use most. So for example, if you are a Windows PC user, you'd click Windows and you'd see all of the applications that are available direct to Evernote. As you can see here in this particular case, there are a finite number of applications. 
so it would be a good idea to find out what they do. For example, we'll take two of them. Call note, for example, allows you to automatically send the recording of your Skype conversations to Evernote. The G-Sync It application synchronizes Outlook folders with Evernote notebooks. So again, all of these factors allow you to work with platforms that are already part of your productivity mix. Now you'll notice that Evernote has six platforms that it focuses on. The Android platform, iPhone, iPad, Windows, Mac, and then there are also web application or browser applications. So we're going to go ahead and click web applications. And what you're going to notice is that there are a number of web applications that Evernote integrates with. There are two in particular that we are going to focus on in this course. One of those applications is If This Then That, or IFT, as well as Zapier. Both web applications allow you to connect multiple applications to Evernote. So your capability is extended even further. So in the next video, we're going to start the process by looking at integrations between IFT, or If This Then That, and Evernote. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. We are now at the website IFT, or If This Then That. You can access that website by going to ifttt.com. If you go to the site, and after the backslash, you write Evernote, you'll notice that IFT has an Evernote page where they talk about some of the connections that are available. So if you don't have an account with IFTTT, you are going to want to sign up for one now. Now you can choose to sign up with Google, Facebook, or sign up or sign in. And if you have a Gmail account, your sign up will be instant and you will already be given access to IFTTT. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to connect our account. And in order to do that, we are going to need to give IFT permission to access our Evernote account. So we're going to do that by putting our Evernote account email address in this dialog box. We're then going to need to write in our Evernote password. Now, if you have sensitive information, you are going to want to read your third party applications permission just so that you'll understand what you'll be doing with IFT. You want to determine how long you're going to give IFT access to your account. And once you've done that, you are then going to click Authorize. Now, once you do that, you'll then want to come back to the main screen in IFT. And you'll want to know which services actually integrate with Evernote. And so what you'll want to do is you'll want to write Evernote into the search grid. And then you'll notice the applets that'll come up at the bottom telling you which recipes are going to be available to connect two services together where one of them is going to be Evernote. For example, you can sync starred emails in Gmail to Evernote so that all you'll have to do is to go in, click star, and then that email will then show up inside of Evernote. You can actually create connections between Google Calendar and Evernote. And you'll see a number of integrations that you'll want to be able to use. Now, if you want to speed up the search process, then all you'll need to do is to then write in the other application. And you'll be able to find those applications that are connected to Evernote and the service that you're looking for. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now in this video, we are going to be discussing scanning documents into Evernote. Now you may from time to time come across a situation where you are with your mobile device and you need to scan something and you need to make sure that you archive it properly. Evernote has an application that we can actually download to our mobile device to make the scanner work along with your Evernote application. And so you're going to go to your app store and you're going to type in Evernote Scannable and then you're going to get the application. Now, once the application has been installed, you can then open the application. 
the application is going to ask you if it can access the camera and you're going to say okay you will then sign in with your Evernote account now once you have your application open you will then find your document the one that you are going to want to use you're going to then want to hold your camera over that document so that it is captured once you have the document then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to save the document and then you'll get a note saying that notifications allow scannable to alert you if they're going to be issues saving this scan we're then going to click OK and then we're going to continue now we do then want to allow scannable to send us notifications now our document has been saved to our inbox inside of Evernote so then we can then click done our document is then inside of Evernote we can then annotate it now if you attempt to change the document information inside of the web app you will not be able to you will need to go to the desktop application and it's here that we can actually change the name of our document we can add in tags here also so basically what we're able to do is we're able to take anything that we scan we're able to annotate it and then we're able to categorize it into a notebook where we want it to be okay so with that thanks and I will see you in another video hello and welcome now in this video we are going to create an audio note and we're going to save it and archive it in Evernote and in order to do that on the desktop app what we're going to do first is we're going to click new note and then once we have the note open we're going to give that note a title and then once we do that we're going to look to the toolbar and then we're going to click this link that says record audio and then what we're going to do and you'll see that this audio is actually recording and you can see the meter as it records speech and we're going to go ahead and click the record button and what's going to happen is that Evernote is going to actually record the audio as speech is heard in this particular case and then once the audio has been completed all you'll need to do then is hit the save button you'll then have a WAV file inside of Evernote the one thing that you're going to want to be aware of is that these audio notes as WAV files are going to be fairly large and what will govern whether or not these audio notes sync properly to Evernote is that they do not exceed your limit so in some cases the limit is 25 meg in other cases the limit is 200 meg again it really depends on what level you've purchased you can also do the same thing using your mobile device and so what you'll need to do is to click this green button and then you'll want to give your document a title then once you do that you're going to click that plus button and then you're going to click record audio Evernote is then going to want to use the microphone and then you will be able to dictate into your mobile device just as if you were dictating into your PC or just as we did prior to this once you have completed your audio note you will then click done you'll then have a similar file inside of Evernote for you to be able to use and notate and categorize okay so with that thanks and I will see you in another video welcome back you are now looking at the desktop application of Evernote and the strength of Evernote is your ability to take notes on just about anything and to categorize it properly so when you click new note you are going to notice that you are going to have a traditional word processing interface which means that you will be able to digital notes and include just about anything so for example we might have this text and we're just going to copy and paste some text in here if there's something else that is part of the thought on what you've posted you can actually upload and attach a file and Evernote reminds you that when you upload an office document in particular one from Microsoft 
that document's going to be searchable inside of Evernote. So we're going to go ahead and click OK because we just uploaded a PowerPoint presentation. And so that can be associated with all of the data that you have just entered. You can upload an image. That image, if it's part of the thought that you are trying to communicate or that you're trying to archive. Now, any additional aspect of our upload, we can actually right click the actual document and we can annotate the image. So in this particular case, we can add information to the image and we can further give it some clarity so that again, when we are looking to search for this image or we're doing a search later on, we will have archived information that will help us. And of course, we can save our annotation. The key is that once we have archived this information, it's going to be searchable and it's going to be synced across our devices. We can also add to the document with written notes. So if we capture it with an image, we can take our photo and we can have this added to the document. When we save it as a document, that means then that this content is actually going to be searchable. We'll click Save. And now this document is now part of our note. So again, this gives us added flexibility of being able to add to something and to continue to keep all of the thoughts in one place and to be able to archive it appropriately. Now, in another video in this series, we are actually going to show you how to categorize and how to notate so that you'll be able to find things easy. However, one of the things you want to be aware of is that with Evernote, you will be able to find information according to the words that you have placed in here, whether or not they're from images or from the actual text. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, in this video, we are going to integrate our calendar in our platform with Evernote. Now, we're going to go through three popular calendar integrations, Google, iCal, and Outlook, which covers most, if not all, digital calendar users. Now, in order to integrate Google with Evernote, what you'll need to do is you'll need to write in the phrase into Google, integrate calendar with Evernote. You'll find a specific search result inside of the IFT website, and it will say connect Google Calendar to Evernote. When you find that search result, you're going to click it. Now, there are several connections between your Google Calendar and Evernote. What you'll do is you'll scroll through the different integrations and you'll choose the one that helps you best. And once you do that, what you're going to do is you're going to click the recipe. And when you get the recipe, what you're going to do is you're going to click turn on. And then IFT is going to ask for permission to access your Google Calendar. You'll click OK. If T will say it wants to manage your calendar, you're going to click allow. And depending on the particular recipe, you will then be brought to a configuration screen. And what you'll need to do is you'll need to set up your parameters for the recipe. And in some cases, if T will give you the opportunity to do what it calls add an ingredient. And so if you look at the actual description of the ingredient, you can actually add in the new ingredient to the recipe. And you'll see the addition being made. You can add in another ingredient here. And this will happen from time to time within recipes. Once you have added all the ingredients and you have configured your recipe, you can then click Save. What you'll want to do at that point is you'll want to make sure that the applet runs and you can do that by clicking Check Now. If T will say you th that the applet has been checked, and now your application is ready to run inside of both Google Calendar and Evernote. So the key will be understanding which of the recipes you want to actually work with your Evernote categorization system. You'll then set up 
and then configure the recipe. Now, in order to connect to iCal, what you're going to do is you're going to click your mail icon if you are in Apple. And you can do a similar exercise if you are in Android. You want to look to your mail application. And what you're going to do is you're going to either choose both Google, which integrates into Evernote in the way that we just showed you, or you're going to choose Outlook. What will happen then is that the calendar will sync based on that third party connection. So once again, you can choose either Outlook or Google to sync with Evernote and then sync either Google or Outlook with your mail system so that iCal calendar will reflect what's in Evernote. Now to integrate your Outlook calendar, what you're actually going to do is you're going to do this from the Microsoft side and you're going to do this through the Microsoft Office Store. Now, once you arrive at the page, you are going to see that there are certain products within the Outlook family that are going to be supported. And if that is one of yours, then what you're going to do is you're going to then click Get It Now. And once you've done that, then your integration will be complete between Evernote and Microsoft Outlook's calendar. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now in this video, we're going to talk about filing and organization. And this is really the strength of Evernote. And it gives you several options to use in order to categorize your information. Now, the most obvious is that you can actually tag every note that you put together. So in other words, there's a note that has lots of text in it. That text is going to be searchable. However, we may want to give that text some context. And so we can do that with tags. And if we're inside of the desktop app, all we'll need to do is to click add tag. And then we're just going to write in contextual information that will help us to find similar information when we want it. And what this means then is that when our information is properly synced and we were to go looking for all of the documents that had classified ads or direct marketing, the one that we just notated would be one of those that we would find. And so tagging is one good way that we have available to us in Evernote of classifying our information. Now the notes are saved into notebooks and this can have different groupings of notes that you think are similar or that give you a category that you like to keep together. And you can create as many notebooks as you want and you want to create them according to a system that's going to make sense for you. Those notebooks can be further categorized into stacks. And so we can take a notebook, we can right click that notebook, and we can add that to a specific stack that we create. Once again, it gives us the latitude of being able to name and create a stack that makes sense for our categorization. And everything that we associate with our document can be categorized and annotated. And all we'll need to do is to go to the actual image or the actual piece of information and then right click it. We can rename that document whatever we want it to be. And you'll see that here. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to create a system that's going to be easy to manage yet at the same time provides us information when we need it. We don't want to do searching and get an overwhelming number of responses because then that makes our search cumbersome. Now, one of the other things that you can do is you can actually tag by setting a reminder and you can go to this right hand menu and you can click reminder and you can add a date to the note. Now, obviously there is a date posted and a date created that does give your document some context. However, when you remind yourself to look at it at a specific point in time, you are giving yourself another level of categorization that you can actually help yourself to look at it again when it's time. And so you can use the reminder feature in that manner. Now for hints of more customization, all you'll need to do is to click this information button. You can actually change any of this information to fit what it is that you want to search for. So for example, if you want to set a source URL, if you want to set a location, you can do that. And you can actually view the additional history as it is according to the document. 
Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, in this video, we want to discuss task integration. Evernote, as it stands, is not created for us to manage tasks in this platform. However, there are some direct integrations that you can actually use in order to integrate tasks and Evernote. In order to do that, you are actually going to click the search bar, and then we're going to click task. Now, there are five associated apps with productivity and tasks. There's Ifty, which we have seen before, Zapier, and a few others. So one of the ways that we can actually use Evernote and some kind of task manager is to tie them together through an application like Ifty or one like Zapier. In fact, Zapier ties to the popular task manager called Wonderlist. And in fact, Wonderlist and Evernote have at least eight different integrations that you can actually use in order to integrate tasks and your use of Evernote. So for example, in going into Zapier, you'll find that the connection point is that you can create a note in Evernote and then have Zapier work inside of Wonderlist to automatically create a task. And of course, all you'll need is your Evernote account and your Wonderlist account. You would then click what's called creating a zap. So the triggering action is that when a new note is created in a specific notebook. So we'll now need to collect an Evernote account. We'll allow Zapier to connect with our Evernote. We'll then put in our password. We'll give Zapier permission to work with Evernote. So now our Evernote account is connected. We're going to click Save and Continue. And then what we're going to do is we're going to select some advanced options. And then we're going to make sure that we use a specific notebook. So in this particular case, we're going to use the email content and copy notebook. What we're going to do now is we're going to click Continue. So to test our trigger, we want to have at least one note recently created. We're going to click Fetch and Continue. And Evernote says that our test has been successful. So now we will then click Continue. What we will do now is we will create a task inside of Wonderlist. We need to connect a Wonderlist account. We're now going to sign in. And we should test our Wonderlist account. When we are successful, we can click Save and Continue. And then we will write in a title. And we'll then click Continue. What we will do now is we will send a test to Wonderlist. And our task has just been sent to Wonderlist. So now what we can do is we can check Wonderlist to make sure that our task is now there. And if we look, our task has been added from Zapier into Wonderlist to help us to manage our tasks. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. You are now looking at Google Drive. And Google Drive is where you can not only have storage, but also all of the documents that you have within the Google Docs system. So anything that you have created in the way of slides, in the way of word processing documents, in the way of spreadsheets, it's all available inside of Google Drive. And that's in addition to any other content that you have posted or linked in this area. As you can see, all users have available to them 15 gigabytes of storage space using Google Drive. And all is directed under the Gmail system. Currently, Evernote integrates directly with Google Drive. And you can see within any note, you'll be able to actually attach a file from Google Drive. So what we need to do is to create the integration. And you'll notice that this integration is available on all platforms except for Internet Explorer and Firefox. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and set up the integration.
And we're going to do that by clicking the Try Now button. And that's going to take us to our Evernote account to sign in. What we'll need to do is to go inside of our settings. We can access them by going to the account area, then clicking on the settings. And then we can go to the connected services. And you're going to notice that the Google Drive area is not necessarily signed into. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn this on for Google Drive. That'll bring us through the sign in and we're going to click allow. And then we will be connected to Google Drive. We can also sign in with Google in one click and we are then connected. So now we'll want to make sure that all of our devices are now synced. And so we'll go to our desktop and we'll click sync. That means now that our desktop is now synced to the web application. That now means then that if we go to a certain point in our document and we actually put a space holder in there, we can then go and get our Google Drive information. So we can click attach file from Google Drive. And what you'll see now from within Evernote are all of the documents that are available within Google Drive, except that they are now inside of Evernote. So we have a full integration. So all we'll need to do is we'll need to click on what we want to select and then click the select button. And you'll see now that this Google Drive document has now been linked inside of our notes. Now, just as is the case with all the other content, this content is now searchable within our Evernote. And the same is true in the web app. And just as a point of reference, you will not be able to search the content of these documents, but you will be able to search their titles. And because this is an online application, this will not count towards your upload quota for the month. So using Google Drive is really a way of being able to extend the storage capability of Evernote. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. If you'd like another level of organization and categorization, you can actually integrate Evernote with a very popular application called Trello. And Trello allows you to manage lists as well as individual items. And while Evernote allows you to archive individual items, you can combine the two in an integration in Zapier. Evernote and Trello have about 11 total integrations. And so as soon as you find the integration that best fits, you can start the integration process between the two applications. For example, you can actually have a Trello card created from an Evernote note. You can have that Evernote note created from a specific workbook of your choosing. So let's use this particular Zap to set it up. Knowing that you'd use the same process to do any of the other Zaps that you see in the Evernote and Trello integrations. So what we're going to do is we're going to click use this zap. Once we do that, we're going to click create this zap. We then have our Evernote trigger. And then we're going to select our Evernote account. Once again, we're going to reauthorize Zapier with Evernote. And that brings us back to our zap. So we're going to click save and continue after our test. And then we're going to choose the notebook that we are going to be using. We'll then click continue. Once we have verified that we actually have a task that is being collected, we're going to click, we're going to click fetch and continue. Now what we're going to do is we're going to click continue. And in order to connect Trello, what we're going to do is to start the process with the create card link. Then we are going to connect our Trello account. Trello is going to ask us to let Zapier use our account. We're going to say yes. Then we're going to click allow. And then our Trello account will then be connected to Zapier. We're going to click save and continue. Then we're going to choose a specific Trello board. 
and we're going to choose the one that we created. We're going to choose a list within that board. And then we're going to click continue. So now all we need to do is to send a test to Trello. Once we note that Zapier has sent the card, we can then check our Trello account. And we can see that our note is inside of Trello. So we can now click finish. So now our Zap is working and that means that Trello and Evernote are now connected. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. If you are allowing others to track your progress on a WordPress blog and you are sharing notes with them on a regular basis, you can actually connect your Evernote application to WordPress. And you can do it inside of Zapier. So what you'll do is you'll click the Post New Notes, and then you will then create the Zap. You will then create a new note. Your Evernote account should already be connected from previous applications. We're going to click Save and Continue. And we're going to choose a specific notebook from which to operate. What we're now going to do is we're going to click Continue. And then we're going to fetch the same information so that we make sure that our test is working. We can then click Continue. And now what we can do is we can create a post based on the note we create in Evernote. So now what we need to do is to connect an account. And so we will need to provide some login information. Once we have the information for our WordPress account, we're going to click continue. We're then going to test our WordPress account. Once Zapier confirms it has been successful, we're going to click save and continue. So now what we'll need to do is we'll need to write in a standard title. Okay, once we have all the information we're going to place in there, we're going to click continue. And now we should find a post on our WordPress site when we send a test to WordPress. Once we confirm that Zapier has sent the post, we can then check our site. And we can now verify our automated post in draft form. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. There are several integrations available between the popular storage app, Dropbox, and Evernote. And you'll notice that there are about six integrations that you can do with the third-party app Zappy. You want to note which one you actually want to use. For example, maybe if you want to send a Dropbox file to Evernote, what you'll do is you will click use this Zap. So in this case, what Zapier is going to do is it's going to watch the folder you choose in Dropbox. When you upload files there, it's going to create a note and then send the link to your Evernote. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click create this Zap. We're then going to click the trigger and then we're going to connect a Dropbox account. What you're going to do is you're going to allow Zapier to access your Dropbox. Once you have your files synced and you have tested, you will then click save and continue. We will actually choose a folder in Dropbox. And here's our folder, creating content with Evernote. Then we're going to click continue. We're going to do a test through Zapier. And you'll notice that Zapier says that we did not have a file. So we're going to have to go ahead and place a file there. We can now verify that our file is now in Dropbox. So now let's go back to Zapier. And we are now back at our fetch and continue step. So we're going to click continue. Our test is now successful. We'll then click continue. We're now going to go to the next step where we create the note in Evernote. We're going to test our connection and then click save and continue. We're going to need to select a notebook inside of Evernote. So we will click the email content and copy notebook. 
we will want to give our note a title. And then we want to give that note a little content. Because there is going to be another URL. You don't have to include any other information. If you want to include some of the information requested in the advanced, you can. For example, if you want to include tags, but this is going to be an automated process. So if you know they're going to be different files, you may not want to designate those tags ahead of time. So once you've completed everything that you want your post to say, we're going to click continue. And then we now have our zap set up. We'll now click send test to Evernote. And now a test note has been sent to Evernote. So we should be able to check to find out if something is actually working correctly. And you'll notice now that our link has been directed into Evernote along with the text that we have. So now we can click finish. In some cases, you may have an error. And then if that's the case, you'll want to correct it. And once you do that, Zapier will confirm that your automation is working. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Through Zapier, we can also integrate and automate our connection to the photo sharing site Pinterest. And you'll notice that Evernote and Pinterest interact in two ways. First, you can create Evernote notes from your actual pins. You can also append notes in Evernote from new pins that you make. So both are very helpful if you are actually tracking what you're doing in Pinterest. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take the first one and we're going to start with that zap. And so we're gonna click connect an account. Zapier will need permission inside of Pinterest. We're going to say okay, and we're going to test our connection. Once Zapier determines that the connection is sufficient, we'll then click save and continue. Now we'll need to select a board from those that we already have in Pinterest. And once we select that board, we'll then click continue. Once we have everything in place, we'll click fetch and continue. And then we will then go on to our Evernote account. We'll then create a note in Evernote. We'll test our connection again. We'll then click save and continue. Then we'll need to select a notebook or create one. So we'll use our email content and copy. We're going to give our note a title. We're going to provide some context with some additional text. If we want to use an advanced settings, we can do that. We're going to, for the sake of time, we're just going to click continue. Once we do that, we're going to test our note to Evernote. We need to check our test note and we'll see our pen from Pinterest as well as the text that we added in for context. Once we do that, we can then click finish and we can decide to turn our zap on. Now in the case of Twitter, you will have choices. For example, there are at least six zaps that we can undertake. And there are also recipes that we can actually undertake with Ifti. So in some cases, it may be a good idea to also check Ifti so that you can discern whether or not you can actually do the automation without having to be charged. But in this case, as well as in the cases in other applications as time goes forward, you're always going to want to check both integrations before you create a new automation. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. In conclusion, now Evernote is an application that is adaptable to the way you categorize and organize your information. It's a great way of being able to organize those things that you personally think are important from day to day. Now you can keep track of all of that information in real time on your desktop on the web and on your mobile device and have them all agree. Now, what isn't so obvious though is how you chronicle your information and your activity and also track that activity in Evernote. Now, because our individual online worlds are so complex, we need ways to make it easy to figure out what we've done day to day and where online we've actually done it. And we've seen in this course that you can use automation features in Evernote to do that. And how you can do it so that you don't have to manually create an entry in Evernote. And we've seen that Evernote has its own set of direct applications. Now we've also seen that the website Ifti has recipes that connect our activity to Evernote. And lastly, we've been able to see that the site Zapier can take our business-related activity and automate posts in Evernote. 
Zapier even provides us a way of being able to work on a document and update it in WordPress. Now since Evernote comes at a cost, it's a good idea to start with the most features to discern whether or not you'll actually need them. And of course, you can then downgrade to the level that you operate in your life and in your business. Okay, so thank you very much for your attentiveness, and I will see you either in another video or in another course.